We money everyone, as we all know we need to submit our design within 48 hours for Team Denmark and we could not reach a consensus. It's been a very stressful time for everyone, but I would really appreciate you guys' opinion. We currently have two versions of TD's user identity. One preserves the old elements of its original logo with no radical change. The other one is more modern and creative looking. TD is a prestige client for us. I would go for the second one. Our company was founded with a strategy which aimed to smash the world. The classic one can be made by any company. Our goal is to be creative and differentiate ourselves by revolutionary design. But my problem is, will the client accept the creative design? Yeah, I believe our clients would understand our engine design for sure. Firstly, we are confident to persuade and educate our clients to, to buy our design. After merging with the Redwell, a strategy identity agency, our ability of presenting business-oriented uh, explanation has improved a lot. Secondly, I believe that our company will always stick on the original strategy to match the world. In 2003, we failed in merging with a contract cut, one of our major competitors, because this merge would alter our original strategy of being creatively in a negative way. So, due to strong willingness of staying extraordinary and creative, we gave up this merge even though it can help us to expand the market and leverage the resources from both companies. Thus, in my opinion, handing in, uh, hand in the second design, of course, is the best option for us to reflect our original strategy. However, the fact is we only have 20% of possibility to win the competition if we present the 81, while the classic, classical one will hold 80% of chance. To be honest, I would say our company should see this as valuable opportunities since we will get uh, plenty of merits from being a winner. Once our design is selected, the design will be on major media channels and become a signature work of our company and gain more public attention. I agree the creative one is a risky design, but let's think about our competitor. Denmark is known as the world leading design hub with innovative solutions and user-oriented design. The classic design will not fit the Danish design environment. Think of what our competitor will present in general. They will also present something revolutionary. Compared to others, we will lose our innovative company image with the classic design. We want to smash the world with our design and we should use this campaign to show them, not only to our client but also to our competitor. It is not about winning this competition, it is about building and strengthening our competitive advantages. But is it something the client really wants? I mean, does TD really want the revolutionary design? TD's mission statement is Denmark the best place in the world to be top athletes. It's an organization mainly funded by Ministry of Culture and the Danish Sports Federation. With increasing competition for funding, they realize the importance of visual identity to funders and the public. I don't think they want to lose the original sports symbol in the old logo, such as Olympic rings. I think the cutting edge design go beyond the original concept, and the client only want to improve the visual appealing of their old logo. So that's a major challenge for us right now in the campaign. We only have the brief from the TD now, so it's entirely different than the case we had before. Usually we can reach to our clients and figure out what their needs, but at this time, we have no idea about what they want exactly. That's why we cannot just present like both designs then. If we present both, we can leave the impression, the impression to our clients that our company is really serious about this competition and also show their our ambition of being creativity. And that's not the sum zero game. We can find a way to show both creativity and profession to our clients. I vote for presenting both and letting clients choose like to make the final decision. So once we win the competition, I strongly believe that our company would definitely be lifted to the new level. But if we present both designs, it will definitely increase the opportunity to win, but we will lose the chance to show our character as a company. It seems like we don't believe in our own design, and thus this will damage our reputation in this industry. Hi, Jonas. My name is Rita, and they are my colleagues, Charlotte and Cheryl. Hey! hey. We are consultants from Unicorn Copenhagen. 
Yes, uh, yes, Rita, thanks for coming. As you already know, the choice between the two designs has a far-reaching influence on our reputation. Also, the choice will also affect employees' perception of our company's core value. You know, since we already have two distinct parties in the organization, people who are inspiring the company and the people who are being true to the professional company that needs to make money. Um, thank you, Jonas. That was very valuable information. And what are the reasons that you think may have caused the two parties within your organization? Actually, these two parties are closely related to the history of E-Types. You know, in 2003, three partners left E-Types as other partners opposed the plan to merge with the larger company in order to preserve our core value, smart the world engineers. Um, I totally agree with that. According to McKinsey's Global Managing Director, Dominic Barton, the organizational history is crucial to how its values are shaped over time. The history of the ent enterprise can instill a sense of identity and purpose and suggest the goals that will resonate. To address the issue E-Type is currently facing, we would like to structure the analysis into three levels, individual, group, and organizational. I will start to have a look at the individual level, and then Charlotte and Cheryl will conduct the group level and organizational level, respectively. Sounds good. On the individual level, I would like to look at the personality, emotions, and motivation of the employees working in the organization. It is notable that employees with distinct personalities can affect employees' performance and lead to conflicts at workplace. According to FFMN, there are five personalities, openness to experiences, conscientiousness, extraversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. In the case for E-types, I reckon openness and conscientiousness are the two primary attributes to the conflicts. Employees score higher in openness are typically more curious, imaginative, and broad-minded. Um, openness has been connected to creativity in workplace. The designers in E-types possess these characters and support the edgy strategy of the company. In contrast, the strategist represent individuals with low level of openness. Individuals are typically more traditional and practical. Employees score higher in conscientiousness, typically work in a more organized fashion. They have clear ambition and work persistently towards the goal. Taking Aneta, the strategist and example, in order to seize the personality and values of the client's organization, she works in a very structured and logical manner to draw the structure uh, picture However, designers in E-types work in a more impulsive and less structured way, which makes them more easily get distracted by less important ideas. As your designer told me, they typically gather a lot of information from everywhere. The process of the idea generation purely depends on the flair of inspiration. Wow, that's a very interesting insight. To be honest, I never thought of that. I mean, how can different personalities be so influential? Yes, different personalities are also interconnected to job performance, organizational commitment, and job satisfaction. As we all know, people are the key to E-types, and we want to keep the talented people in the company. For example, intention to leave an organization is less influenced by intrinsic reward than perceived procedure fairness, which is highly important to conscientious workers. Employees high in conscientiousness demonstrate high organizational commitment due to transactional fairness in accordance with the norms of reciprocity, um, which means they believe the quitting goes against with their work-oriented beliefs. The degree of autonomy workers have in their jobs affect their productivity, satisfaction, and intention to quit. Research shows that the ability to make decisions and influence what happens on the job has the greatest impact on job satisfaction particularly among workers' time and openness. They may decide to suddenly quit due to intolerance for routine and boredom. So how about the group level? Well, concerning the group level, we identify there are two important causes of the conflict in E-types. First is a lack of the good team cohesiveness, and the second is a poor team dynamics in your organization. Why do you think that our company is lack of a good team and cohesiveness? Well, comprehensiveness is about to link team members as a whole and remain united to pursue a common goal. However, based on your company, apparently, most of people uh, from strategy department want to keep their conventional design, while other designers in the company prefer to stay true to their roots and being superior and extraordinary. 
if organization cannot establish team cohesiveness, the task and the relationship conflicts would be brought out gradually. In need, sometimes um, particular conflicts can improve team uh, per performance, but the most conflicts reveal that employees fail to establish a common goal and a commitment. For instance, as a designer, you may think that this kind of competition is an honor, while the people from strategy department consider that um, this kind of competition is a business. They have to make profit from this competition. So due to this kind of divergence, it will be too hard to cooperate with each other and reach a consensus. Okay, I see. Then what about the group dynamics? Well, about the group dynamics, um, that means the way in which people interact with each other. There's a problem in your, um, in your company, um, obviously. The group cannot come to a final decision because of ambiguity of leadership. Currently, four, um, four partners in your company have different concentration in the area of design, strategy, and each of them carry equal status in the company. So due to the existing structure, the power are taken from executives and the managers and spread the power to employees. So under this kind of structure, employees have a great autonomy to express their voice and opinions towards their task. So the most obvious drawback of this kind of structure is that the team doesn't have a strong leader to divert the group's attention. So, um, so this kind of things will result a prolonged argument in the meeting and also will cause it too chaotic to reach a agreement. Yeah, now I understand the causes from group level. How about the last one, organizational level? What's your opinion on that level? Mm -hmm. About organizational level, it consists of three parts, selection, organizational culture, and group design. Among those constitute the most relevant two about the current group are organizational culture and management structure. Those two aspects are indeed important to our company. Could you explain them more specifically? Why our company did not do well? Um, sure. Firstly, organizational culture refers to the shared value influencing on people in the organization and detecting how they act and perform. Due to the company's merged history, the internal culture conflict has long stand. Some employees do not buy the idea of smash the world, and this competition is just a trigger to merge the divergence. Based on the 12 characteristics of high-performing team, your company does not have a clear goal after the merge. Some employees believe that the company should listen to the client's needs in order to better serve them, while other employees assume that the purpose of the company should be challenging our client and educate them. How about the second causes in organizational level? Um, secondly, management structure refers to the process of work arrangement. As I heard during the interview, people in ETAPs always cross project lines and play more than one role within the organization particularly the creative director. They are usually involved in every project. Since there are no middle manager in the company to facilitate the communication between partners and lower level employees, the partners are under heavy workload. The productivity and efficiency of partners would be reduced since the overwhelming workload might sap their energy and passion. And furthermore, due to the absence of a formal reporting structure, it is difficult to guarantee the accountability within the organization. Hi, Rita. After our meeting last time, we decided to present both designs and we won the competition at the end. We realized that at the current stage, it's important to balance between the two parties within our organization. I remember at the last meeting, you mentioned that our company has issues in three levels. If my memory is right, they are individual group and organization. Since we won the competition, we are getting more and more jobs. As our client base grows, the conflicts and the problems within the company are also increasing. Mm. I feel it's time to change. Do you have any advice on how to tackle these issues? Yes, of course. Let's start from the individual level. It is important to realize that the relationship between team composition in terms of the big five personality traits and team performance. For example, for team members possess high openness, they can adapt easily to new situations, also, they can help to foster a creative atmosphere in which team members have opportunities to learn and to experience satisfaction. However, if all team members are highly open to experience, this may result in conflict and lower cohesion, because all team members want to get their way. 
Nevertheless, the content and complexity of the particular task, team members' teamwork experience, will also affect team performance, and the team composition should be adjusted uh, accordingly. Besides, it is important for the leader to aware that individuals with different personalities value different things in workplace. Therefore, they need to be motivated differently. If we look at a famous Maslow hierarchy, the five tier of human needs may not rank the way for every individual. For some individuals, the ranking may jump from safety needs directly to the highest level, which is self-actualization. For example, in order to improve employee satisfaction, a raise in salary may not be as effective as giving them more freedom for creative design. Thanks, guys. About the group level, you highlighted the most likely causes of our current conflict. One about the low level of team cohesiveness, and another is relevant to the poor group dynamics. To improve our organizational behavior at the group level and tackle the present rift, could you provide us some recommendations then? Of course, it's my pleasure to offer the help uh, about how to improve team cohesiveness. I would offer the recommendation starting the common goal. The goal not only must be as clear as possible for each member, but also keep, have to keep it alive by continually reviewing the goal. Based on the emerging history and the future expansion, the goal of the company might be slighted like um, altered at the different stages. It is critical to keep employees updated with the latest one and also inspire them to commit to that. Especially the people from other merging company, E-types need to invest more time and effort to make them to understand and accept the goal by different integrated approaches. But how to encourage people to share a common goal and work toward that? Good question. To establish a common goal, it is essential to set a good communication environment where well can offer opportunities for the team member to interact and build trust with each other. Under the safe and supportive communication environment, people are free to ask questions and exchange their new creative ideas with each other. Thanks for your recommendation on how to improve our team cohesiveness. Then how about the group dynamics part? I would like to listen to your suggestions on improving the dynamics within the group. About the way to improve group dynamics, I will emphasize more on the team leader aspect. In the diagnosis, it is to be aware that there is a relatively weak leadership structure within organization. Uh, and this kind of uh, structure can result in poor group dynamics, of course. So due to there is no clear hierarchy structure, employees are empowered and uh, they share the same set in, within the organization. So maybe it would be good to motivate and inspire um, the creativity among employees. However, the process of decision making would take a long time and some of them even can be suspended. So based on that, setting a strong leader in your company would be a priority in your company. I appreciate your help so much. It has given us a lot of insights on improving our organizational behavior at the group level. How should we address organizational level issue? Um, there are three steps involved in solving organizational level issues. Firstly, E-Type needs to have a clear value proposition which address the existing two parties in the company, designers and strategists. This value proposition should emphasize on both parties by underlying the importance of cutting-edge design and profitability. This new value proposition will build financial awareness for designers and emphasize our competitive advantage to strategists. I agree with you. This is our original strategy. We need to figure out our core value to address the importance of both parties. Um, great. Secondly, E-types should then align the company structure to current strategy and value. Regarding the limitation of horizontal structure, we would like to recommend E-type to adopt a matrix structure, um, which designer will have due reporting relationship to both functional manager and project manager. E-type needs to recruit more project manager for matrix structure. Um, but this change will provide more flexibility to the director since they don't need to involve in every project. And I also need to mention that change management structure requires a huge amount of time and resource. It is a risky decision. If you decide to change the structure, we need to have another discussion to provide you with more guidance. 
Currently, most of the Danish design companies use a flat hierarchical structure and team-oriented approach. I'm concerned by the effort and resources required behind this change of structure, but I agree we need more people at a manager level. Um, yeah, it is not easy to find a perfect fit in terms of structure. Uh, Matrix structure also has its own problem. Again, the change of structure is your choice. Um, now let's look at the third step. Company needs to conduct a course of action to support the current strategy and value. For E-types, you need to conduct practice on both sides and emphasize the uh, value proposition on both sides. Cutting edge design and profitability. Take fashion brand as an example. It has ready-to-wear products like clothing, handbags, and shoes that makes the most of their income, but they also have designers in charge of runway shows and the innovative fashion creation. Those high-end products only sell to a small part of their markets, but it will increase the brand image of the company. Those runway shows do run in a loss, but it delivers the brand to their customers. E-types could adopt a similar approach by continuing making projects like Blackfoot to remain a creative mindset internally and also promote innovative company brand image. Yes, the purpose to Blackfoot project is to create an innovative atmosphere in the company. We will continue that. Um, yeah, I think basically we covered every aspect. If you have any other questions or need more information, please feel free to contact us. Definitely. I have gained a lot of insight from today's discussion. Thank you so much for your advice. Thank you.